part of our Skype segment. Uh, before we went on break, we had a very interesting conversation with the National Secretary of ADC, the African Democratic Congress, uh, Mr. Saeed Abdullahi. He was at a meeting today with uh, the INEC chairman, um, Mr. Professor Jega, and we had some interesting things. You know, they called a meeting of stakeholders, what they call stakeholders in Nigeria, which is a meeting of uh, party, uh, political party leaders to discuss whether the election should be postponed or should go ahead. And the conclusion was a majority of the parties there said they won the election moved, moved forward. They didn't specify how long in the future the election should be. And according to uh, Abdullahi, it should not be six weeks because they want to give room. In fact, he said that the two issues were PVC the issue of PVC, people getting their uh, permanent voters card, a lot of people are yet to get it, and then of course the security situation in the north, uh, northeast. At the end, they recommended to INEC, a chairman, that he should move the election uh, to a date to be determined by him. As of this time, the nation is waiting for the INEC chairman to decide on what to do. Uh, I still have in the studio with me Dr. Wumi Akin today. Um, welcome back. And, and we are going to go to our Skype callers who have been patient with us. And I, I just want to get your reaction to what Mr. Abdullahi just told us a few minutes ago. Yes, I heard Mr. Abdullahi just talk about having 27 stakeholders. Hmm. The real stakeholder in all of this is President Jonathan and the PDP. It's true that they have these supporting, I mean, supporting elements, stakeholders. In fact, uh, part of the reason I fought Professor Fahiru Yega as chairman of INEC, he did some good, some useful work, but he still has a lot of fault. The mere fact that you register 27 political parties when you know that there are only two that can meet all the conditionalities. For example, I don't see how somebody should register a party that, that cannot even uh, boast of uh, Half a percent, half a half percentage of the voters in popularity, and you register these people. In fact, some of these twenty-seven uh, stakeholders, they are there to pound on this situation that we are in now. When there is confusion, then the uh, the, 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 uh, the president is looking for members of these uh, nominal political parties and to get them, and then they, there is a price to pay. Some of them will get ten million. They are waiting for this opportunity. My Nigeria is in a mess. Now, I think they got it wrong again because the issue is not Jaga now. The issue is the guy, the head of the military, who told INEC that given what they have, the reality of their situation, they cannot guarantee that a fair and free election, that they can supervise the election within one week. Why don't they ask that man? How much time do you need? before you can be ready, because all the, all, the, all the jazz we are talking about now rests on him. If in six weeks, if the same military man came up and said, we are not ready, that's the end of it. All right, let's go to our Skype callers. Let's get them involved in this discussion. Uh, Mohammed, welcome back to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Rudolf. Okay. Now, uh, Bishop, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you so much, uh, Rudolf. Uh, nice to stand with you guys. Yeah. Adebi, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. And I understand that Michael joined us. Michael, welcome to Sarah TV. Michael? All right. Um, maybe he left again. All right. Let me go back to you, Mohammed. Oh, you, well, you, I'm here. Oh, you're yeah, there? Thank okay. You. Okay. Michael, yeah. where are you? I'm from New York. New York. Oh, yeah. Oh. Staten Island, to be precise. Oh, you should have come into the studio. All right. Thank you. Um, Mohammed, let me come back to you. So, you, you, were you able to watch what um, Abdullahi said? I, I heard him when he was talking. Okay, okay. And I am really, really, really amazed at the way this guy was talking. From from deducting from all the uh, conversations and the reports, the feedback he was giving back to us, um, I could just reduce from what he has said. It boils down that simply, like Dr. 
Akim Wumi has said, these are parties that are just there based on nominal rule so that they will fulfill all righteousness in case there is crisis like this. And then they will be bribed and then they will succumb to the ruling political class, that is the PDP. I think this thing has been pre-planned, uh, especially for those kind of evil people. I call them evil people who are surrounded the president because they are the ones who has been giving him all these kind of uh, uh, strategies to adopt. First and foremost, we know that the tenure for Atahiru Jega is around the corner. The president has sensed in all the polls that if polls were held or is, is going to be held on the 14th of February, he's going to lose this election. Number three, a sitting president will be a president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And his chief of defense staff, the chief of army staff, the chief of naval staff, and the inspector general of police will come and tell you that they cannot guarantee security of life and property during the election? Come on now. Then what the hell are they doing as in these positions? I think they should resign because they are not able to perform their statutory responsibilities. The constitution gives everybody the chance to perform his responsibilities. And if they cannot perform, if they cannot guarantee the lives of property, the, 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 the lives and property of people during that election, they have no business being in that position there. I, I listened to what uh, Captain uh, uh, Sagir Kohli yeah. was saying. I want to, 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 to really, really appreciate the courage that that young man took. I think that young man should be one of the people that Nigeria will not forget in the nearest future. That young man took a risk of his life. That young man has Nigeria at the heart of his mind. And that is why he did what he had to do. Look at the man is in hiding. And you'll be surprised now, if care is not taken, if they find where that guy is, how vicious they are, they can eliminate that young man. All right. So well, I think, yes. Yeah, right. thank you so much. We're going to go back to that discussion. But I want to hear from Bishop and Debbie and Michael what do you think about this election, the postponement of the election, uh, in light of what uh, we just heard from Abdullahi? I, 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 Bishop, I'm coming to you, and I wanted to, because I asked him, you know, what, what is the guarantee that they will take care of these two issues by the time they fix the new date? And his answer was fascinating. He said, okay, that's why we want them to have it before they get to the point of no return, which is three weeks from today, um, six weeks from That's today. Sad. So we want them to have it, you know, have the election, maybe set the new date for three weeks. If at that time they are not ready, they move it again. You know, that tells you that we are really in serious issue, problem. <laughs> but Bishop, what do you think? Yes. Firstly, uh, Rudolf, I want to let the old world know I'm not in support of Jonathan. I'm not in support of uh, uh, Buhari either. But my own candid and sincere opinion is this. You see, these people, they have a hidden agenda. Why prepare for an election if you know that the election is going to postpone? Why prepare for an election? You should have known, foresee the circumstances, not when the election is being is close, is close by. Now you are coming up to say, oh, you are postponing the election. When you vividly know that this election, in your mind, you've seen and you wait the outcome of the election, that you, when this election is said, you are going to lose. You are seeking for, for postponement. Like that guy that, that just came to give us a, a report of the analysis, like Mohammed has said, those are pa parties that have just been there, they are just there to collect money. They are not, they don't have this heart, they don't have Nigeria in their heart. They have a hidden agenda. Talking about the, secu the chief, uh, security, uh, security in Nigeria, how can how can a military suggest that the election should be postponed if there's nothing behind that uh, statement? There must be a, 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 a backup to that statement. There must be a, they must checkmate that statement that he made that they cannot guarantee the, uh, the, the security and life of property during the ele upcoming election. All right. Jaga, uh, in, all right. It's yeah. sad. Uh, you know, when, sorry, Rudolph, when I talk like this, it's pathetic. And I'm speaking my mind, I'm speaking with passion. As, as if I foresee, like uh, one that justice has said, I foresee revelation, and that will, that is what will happen in the nearest future in Nigeria. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, Adebi, um, one of the key points the, the uh, Abdullahi mentioned was the meeting of stakeholders. 
And I'm thinking, the people of Nigeria, I thought they are part of the stakeholders in, in Nigeria. Uh, Adebi, as one of the people I think you should be a stakeholder, what do you think about this issue of some stakeholders deciding for the nation when elections should take place and the rest of us who have a stake in the country uh, not being consulted? What should we do? Well, we, we have a right to go to the streets to renounce the suggestions or the propositions of the stakeholders. And, uh, and I think uh, we are getting close to the stage of revolution in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, I've been speaking with folks in the country, particularly in Abuja, regarding the situation of peace. And uh, some of the feedback I got was that, uh, is that uh, people are just waiting for Jega to make a pronouncement, whether it's going to go ahead with the election or it's going to turn back from the election. And, and we expect people to go to the streets. Because one thing that is certain is that people are some people, the minority that are in charge of the destiny of the country, they are afraid of the change that may come on 14th of February 2015. And they never thought the momentum was going to be so huge as it is now. And that's why you could see all sorts of things coming up. We witnessed the same thing during the time of uh, Abiola. I mean, it was this kind of it was this kind of atmosphere yeah. that we went through, and uh, at the end of the day, there was no revolution in the country. And what they're trying to do now is just to say, where well, the guy wanted to make this pronouncement that the ele election is going to be shifted, and Jonathan is not going to make the pronouncement, and that's why Jonathan has been jumping from one church to the other because he knew if he said that the boy maybe like two days ago. He went for it in somebody today. Don't be surprised. He's going to visit the chief imam of Abuja tomorrow because it's part of the way of consolidating grant to shift this election. And what my mind is telling me is that they are not actually interested in shifting this election. What they actually want to create is an insecure atmosphere that probably might pave way for the postponement of the election indefinitely or perhaps that might pave way for the evolution of crisis in the country as a result paving way for the military to take over in the country all right that, thank you very much adebi uh michael what is your take how do you understand what's going on in the country today uh, uh, anyway as the nigerian we all know that uh, nobody understands whatever goes on in nigeria because, uh, <laughs> as, <laughs> I, 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 pers I personally i say to i, t I tell everybody talk to that not every country should be called a country just because you have natural resources and you have people in settlement you shouldn't be a country i'm, I'm telling you the gospel truth because nigeria is so corrupt and nothing yeah. works there so yeah. we or any nigerian who is acting like oh the new leak we saw from the video is something new uh that person must have been born yesterday we've never had a free and fair election in, in nigeria anybody who says that i could challenge the person there's never been a free and fair election. There's never been anything. Even the whole crisis is going on in the northern part of the country. I, I, uh, I'm not a supporter of jo Jonathan, neither am I a supporter of Buhari himself. But Thank you so much. If, 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 if you were president, if, if, if you were president, what would you do to stop the crime and, or the crisis or Boko Haram in the northern part of the country? When you and I know that some northern um, allies are the ones sponsoring these dudes. They are sponsoring them. And they are the ones causing this carnage. And you never hear them kill um, influential people. They just go kill like the poor people there. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when, when all these things are happening and the people in the settlement over there in the northern community, they don't even denounce Boko Haram. You understand? Neither will, because I grew up in Abba. I, I was in Abba brought up. I know when we used to have like, have, have like so much crisis back. That was, that was when the indigents of Abba denounced like the crisis and they fought for their right. It, because we knew the government wasn't going to do anything. So the military man coming to say, ah, we can't run an election. No. And policeman saying we can't run an election, that they can't guarantee safety. Which safety have they been guaranteeing? They have not guaranteed any safety. Like you and I know, when you go back to Nigeria, there's still crime. There's still... Yeah, they're still collecting bribe on the checkpoint. All right. I ask right. myself, like... Michael, thank, <laughs> you. Nothing... Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, you want to have something to say? Yes, I have something to say. Um, I know a few of us participating in this program are saying that well, I don't have a candidate. I never support Jonathan. I never support Buhari. And, but they don't name who they support. Me. 
I'm supporting Buhari because I see him as the lesser of two evils. There are two evil people, but one is lesser than the other one. I'm supporting Buhari and taking exactly the same position that uh, Wale Choyinka has now taken. Because when Wale Choyinka first started, he wasn't supporting anybody. But by the time, around now, I read the statement from him saying now that he's supporting uh, Buhari with some reservation. Which means, because, and he went on to describe uh, Buhari as the lesser of two evils. I agree, I concur with that. Now, the president has created this monster. The monster we are all feeding today was created by President Jonathan. This election was planned more than one year ago. I am surprised that even Professor Jega, a professor in a university, will wait till one week to the election to start having this kind of debate when you know that uh, the, the, I mean, the great majority of the PVC have not gone out. Nobody has come to collect it. Now in Nigeria, in a, in a country where you have ghost worker, ghost policemen, ghost military men, ghost pensioners, I mean, come on, how can, how can we tolerate this? For example, I myself, I, I am here. I'm supposed to be a federal pensioner. I left the service 1986 on level 16. I was supposed to be a, a federal pensioner and my pension was supposed to have been paid. I went there, they declared me because I was living abroad, I didn't come on time. I was declared a, a ghost uh, pensioner. And when I got there, they told me I have to go and produce my first letter of appointment that I was talking about when I was AS Army 1968 to 1970. Of course, I couldn't produce the letter. So when they were saying that uh, Buhari should go and produce a certificate, I myself, if somebody was asking for my living certificate, I don't know where it is. Yes, because I'm close to 70 now. So the country is in trouble. It, we are in big problem, Rudolph. You said it all. Because this man knew that when the confusion comes, then they will have no choice. He's already president, and uh, he cannot be asked to go with all this crisis. Maybe they will call the military to, to stage a coup. And then I understand that uh, part of the thing he's proposing now is that uh, it should be an interim government. And he wants to be the leader of that interim government. I was proposing to Tinubu, I charge you Tinubu of Lagos, because they know that that man is uh, very ambitious, he wanted to be president, he wanted to be everything in the whole world. So they said, okay, I will still be president, but uh, we'll offer you the position of uh, vice president. Of course, that did not work, because it's too late right now. So the country is in a mess today. And I don't know, in fact, holding this election with what I've seen happen at Adwekiti, holding this election one week from now, is not going to be possible because the military doesn't have the personnel to supervise a nationwide election like they did at Adwekiti. They were able to do it at Adwekiti because it was only one state. In fact, when they were going to repeat it in Ochon, it became totally impossible. There were some loopholes that Arabo Chola took advantage of to neutralize them. That was why Arabo Chola was able to snatch victory out of the jaw of defeat. All right, let me, let me come to Mohammed. Mohammed, I would like to know, uh, as someone who was in the military, military intelligence, what will, in a situation like what we have today in the country, what will be going on within the military cycle in terms of what are they think, what would they be thinking about? How would they be viewing the country, the civilians, and everything going on? Well, the thing is, it's, uh, you know, like I told you, Rudolph, the army I left 15 years ago, it's not the army that is there in Nigeria today. I am glad that you still have people who are thinking alike, like minds, like this captain who was able to do this uh, 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 revealing of this top secret. He is, a man, he, was, he is a member of the military intelligence. Now, the military intelligence for me is so tribalized right now, because I tell you something, the current director of military intelligence, Major General Wiwa, is the immediate junior brother of late Kentaro Wiwa. And you know where he's from. I'm not speaking because I'm from the northern part of the country, no. I'm speaking as a Nigerian. General Wiwa, when he was a captain, he was in the military intelligence. And when he became a major, he had issues. He was posted out of the Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps. He was posted to the infantry. 
But yet, when Jonathan became the head of state, against the advice of late General Azazi, he brought back General Wiwa to the intelligence. And when he brought back General Wiwa to the intelligence, he now made General, uh, uh, he made General uh, uh, Wiwa as the director of military intelligence. So tell me, if you have people like that now, what will the intelligence section be doing in the army? as against playing the script that Mr. President wants to be played. So they will not do their constitutional duty. As far as I'm concerned, the military is compromised already. The corruption yeah. is everywhere. So it's, yeah. it's, these are things that we need to really check and see how we the, 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 how we are going to change this thing. And the only way these things can change is if a new entire new government and if the government comes, I think I am of the All right, uh, Mohammed, we are having uh, issues with your line now. Um, okay, we will uh, round up because we are really out of time. But um, typically, I ask people what is keeping them up at night. I think today will be very easy. Um, let me start with you, Bishop. What's keeping you up at night? Where well, was keeping me up for nine? I, like I always said, is God. If I said I don't, I believe in in the dream of Nigeria and I believe the dream of Africa. But when it comes to what the the happenings of lately, one wonder where is the future of the unity that bound us together as a nation. I fear is what will survive Nigeria if this election holds paraventure and the consequences it will have in 10 years' time. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Adebi, let me rephrase it. What will keep you up this night? Well, it's, uh, it's the interest of having a better Nigeria, and, and that's just it. All right. Uh, Michael, are you still with us? Yes, I am. So when you go to bed, what will you be thinking about concerning Nigeria? What will, what will be your concern? Well, my, my main concern is the re uh, reason why Nigeria would not conform to a, cert a certain norm the whole world follows a certain criteria to choose our leaders, you know? That's why I say I don't support uh, um, Jonathan or Buhari, because this, both of them in a civilized uh, environment, these two people won't even be contested in the first place. Yes, sir. Uh, you Correct. Know, we, 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 yeah, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be going down and choosing mm -hmm. people because they have first school living certificates. The whole world takes a leader who is educated, who has gone places, and if you if you abuse your uh, your post, you you get demoted. You get you go you get down from whatever you're serving, and that's it. That's what's keeping me up. Like uh, when will Nigeria start conforming to a certain norm? Every other country, every civilized democratic country going through. When will we do that? That's the only thing keeping me up. All right. Thank, thank you so much, um, Dr. Umiya today. Yeah. What is keeping me up, uh, up at night? The fate of Nigeria, and there are three things that worry me the most. Religion is totally politicized in Nigeria by President Jonathan today. After religion, judiciary, totally politicized. And then the last hope of the common man, that if there was trouble, you can run to them and hope that they, were, they are going to protect you. That is the military. So the military is politicized. Religion is politicized. The judiciary is politicized, the police, uh, 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 police is politicized, and even military intelligence, which is the hope of the whole country, is politicized. I think Nigeria is in trouble. I am really, ever since I watched that video from Adwekiti, if I tell you I've been able to sleep, I lie to you. I think the country is in a mess. All right, uh, we have to stop here. I want to thank all our guests. Uh, uh, Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. I think we lost him. Bishop, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Roger, for the opportunity. All right. Adebi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph, for the opportunity. Yes, OK. Sir. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rudolph. All right. And Wumi, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be right back to give you updates on the African Cup of Nations. And then we'll round up our shows. Thank you so much for watching.